Hello everyone! Long, uh, long time no see, huh? Hopefully there's still a few of you out there and I'm not just talking to the void. Uh, if you want to know where I've been, uh, channel update, plan for the future, all that fun stuff, I've made a quick community post explaining things, so if you want to go check that out, you can. But what I really want to talk about today is the space shuttle, or more precisely, fixing it. I have decided to try to redesign the entire space shuttle in Kerbal Space Program to address a number of its biggest issues, mainly safety. Now, I'm not just creating a completely new design. I'm going to be adhering to the same goals, plans, and capabilities that NASA would have had when making the shuttle. This means it will need to carry the same amount of payload, include a partially reusable space plane, and get to orbit using three RS-25s and two large SRBs. So let's begin. Here we have a space shuttle, and we are just going to strip this thing all the way down to just basically the front portion of the orbiter, and we can start building the new one from here. Um, one quick disclaimer before we get started on the build here. Uh, I, I do not claim to be smarter than NASA. I do not claim to be a real rocket scientist. Um, this is just Kerbal Space Program. So when I say I'm, you know, fixing the shuttle, you know, yeah, this is kind of just me just kind of brain farting stuff onto the page here, onto the screen, onto your little devices. So this isn't really a better design. If NASA actually saw this and told me to go build this, that it would never happen. If they gave me a billion dollars, they need to give me probably $10 trillion and I would waste $9.9 .9 trillion of those dollars. And maybe by the end, you might get a cardboard box cut out that would approximate the design I'd be going for. So. Yeah, disclaimer out of the way, let us start talking about the improvements that have been made. So, you can already see I'm making some weird changes here. Some weird, some goofy things are happening. What's going on here? So, the big, one of the big changes, or one of the big inefficiencies that I noticed with the space shuttle is the way it handles the engine setup. So, the Soviets, they had their way of doing this with the Buran, if you're aware of that, and the Energia. Uh, where they just had the engines on like the, the the core tank, the orange tank basically. And that is great and all, but you can't recover the engines. And we want to recover the engines because the whole point is reusability, right? Or partial reusability, right? So we need to recover the engines. So how can we make have the simplicity of attaching them straight to the fuel tank? Because in the case of the space shuttle, you needed all these complicated fuel lines and wires and all that fun stuff just to get the fuel from the orange tank into the engines, right? Um, so how do we fix that? We want to get the best of both worlds. We want the engines and the fuel tank, and we also want to be able to recover the engines. So... this design. <laughs> this does not look like it's connecting to any core tank, because where is the core tank? Well, here we go. Hear me out. So the core tank is actually going to go below the space shuttle, but above the engines. Did I say special? The orbiter. That is the plan. It is a very strange plan. So the way this works is actually, is once the core stage has been depleted, or the orange tank, what you do is you detach this little engine pod, which also conveniently has all these little fins on it. Then you engage the RCS thrusters, and then you go ahead and you dock up with the orbiter that is uh, basically in orbit, right? And then you dock them up, and now you can recover the engines. And look at that, you have elevators and vertical stabilizers and all your control surfaces that you need for landing. It is like the best of both worlds. But wait, pilot, you might ask. How would that work? Because it, practically speaking, yes, you could do this in Kerbal, but if you were to actually try to just mash these two parts together in orbit in real life, how would you, you would be able to connect the fuel lines, you wouldn't be able to connect all sorts of things. And what I would say to that is you do not need to. The engines, you don't need them once you're in orbit. You know, they've done their job. They've gotten you to orbit. You do not need to worry about connecting fuel lines. So really, the only kind of goofy thing would be making sure all the electronics can get, you know, back and forth so you can actually send signals to move the fins and stuff. But that is much, much, much simpler than trying to connect cryogenic fuel lines. So this is the setup that you'd be looking at when you come in for a landing. And I think it is time to give her a test. A test, a test, I can speak. Here we go, here she is, and look at that. She is very, very stable. Look how well she flies. Actually, compared to a normal space shuttle, you know, disclaimer, in Kerbal Space Program, this thing flies quite a bit better, to be honest. You know, I, if I do say so myself. Oh. Um, 
me here just doing a quick landing test making sure everything you know stays upright nothing falls off nothing is unstable and a little bouncy but there we go perfect now we know we can land and basically all that's left to figure out now is how to take off how to get into orbit and that is where the big orange paint comes into play and that is where another design improvement uh, comes into play as well. I'm just kind of adding the uh, the orbital maneuvering thrusters here. So if we're putting the orange tank between these engines and the orbiter, right, that means the shuttle is not gonna have that weird sideways mount thingy, which basically was responsible for a lot of the safety issues because, because of the mounting thingy, no launch escape system, which you can see I'm implementing right now because it is on top of the rocket. It is on the tippy top. So therefore we can have basically an almost normal launch escape system. We just have these two little uh, solid rocket uh, boosters here that can just pull the just the cockpit away if there's an issue. See, easy, much much simpler than basically mounting the astronauts right next to these big flaming death sticks that are the SRVs, and also right next to the high, right next to the cryogenic hydrogen, which is probably going to explode. So, which has happened, you know, <coughs> Challenger. Good job, NASA. Um, I guess it wasn't technically, but you get the point, right? You get the point. So here we are. I am putting in the orange tank, and the, uh, this is basically the design, right? This is basically the final kind of design. Now, there's a little bit of goofy stuff that is going on at the bottom. I'll explain that a little bit more in flight, but as you can see, there's only three of the fins, and then we add a fourth one that is going to be actually separated. But uh, all in all, this is the final design of the improved shuttle, which means it is now time to begin... <laughs> That's right, it is time to do the testing. And the first thing we need to test is the launch abort system. So here she is on the pad and we are going to hit the abort button. And... Oh, that is not right. That's not good. That, that's how you kill Kerbals. That is bad. Uh, they actually survived. But uh, yeah, not, we might, need to, we might need to go back to the, yeah, we need to redesign that a little bit. Let's, let's do second, second try. Oh, wait, no, nope, 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 third try, third try, third try is the charm, that didn't happen. We, uh, we made a few changes and that is what is supposed to happen. A nice, clean, beautiful abort, get some nice air, gets a little bit of distance, stage away those uh, SRVs, pop the chute, and we are in good shape. Let it uh, coast on down, and there we go. We can go on to our next test, which is gonna be our max Q abort test. And this also doubles as our first flight test, see if the thing is actually flight capable, doesn't flip over, doesn't crash. And hey, so far so good. She is actually pretty stable. I was surprised at how stable she ended up being with the, uh, even though there are those two big wings at the top, I guess that the four at the bottom managed to offset that by, by enough, you know? She was actually pretty stable. Not, you know, not the most stable rocket I've ever flown, but pretty good. And here comes abort. Perfect, flawless. Clears the rocket and it goes, spins in circles and it actually doesn't end up crashing. It does like a big loop and then just flies off to, I don't know, the moon or something. It's, it's it has its mind of its own. <laughs> but we are gonna just uh, go on down, pop the chute, and that is a successful abort test. And uh, with those two trials completed, I think it is time to give this thing a shot at delivering a payload to, to low Earth orbit. So we're gonna be adding this little kind of space station module type thingy, plop it in the cargo bay, and we can give this thing a full test flight, a full run through of a proper mission. So launch, payload deployment, and of course, recovery of the orbiter. So here come the engines and here come the SRBs. We are now in the air and the redesigned space shuttle is on its way to low Earth orbit to show how awesome it is, hopefully. Um, we've packed out our four main Kerbals and we can start our gravity turn. This is basically just a normal launch, basically kind of just an SLS launch if you really think about it. This thing is, the bottom of it is basically an SLS. I wonder how many times I can say basically in this video. Probably a lot. Uh, 
But we are just getting close to uh, SRB separation here, and once that goes, it is just gonna be a pretty simple trek up to orbit. Uh, once we get above 40-ish kilometers and atmospheric effects are no longer a thing, we can, there we go, chop away one of those four fins. That really doesn't do much for us, but uh, there goes the launch escape system. But a tiny bit of efficiency is a tiny bit of efficiency because we only need the three of them, three of the fins, uh, for landing it up, two horizontal stabilizers, one vertical, and uh, you don't need the rest, do ya? Um, we can now go ahead and stage away that orange tank, and now is when we have to do that recombination docking thing. We're going to try and do that really quick before we get into orbit, so we can use our little orbital thrusters to actually circularize, and that means we don't leave any space debris, which is nice. Space dolphins, let's go. Uh, but... I also fail at the docking by just ramming into the orange tank. I probably should have, like, scooted the orange tank away before attempting this, but hey, less fun that way. I also decided to put basically the least powerful monoprop thrusters onto this very heavy fuel tank engine module thing, which made it very, very slow. Also, you may notice the game audio suddenly stopped. That's because I did a big brain maneuver and I left the in-game music on when I'm in orbit, and that is a problem because when you speed up the footage, you can kind of imagine where the problem lies there. But I've also, actually, I made another really big blunder. See if you can notice it. It is not what you think. See, eh, it's, you're, about to, you're, about to, you're about to see what it is. See if you're right. And, ooh, ooh, you're probably wrong. <laughs> you probably thought that the fin being upside down was a problem. No, I didn't realize this, but the horizontal stabilizer on the back is actually blocking the uh, orbital maneuvering engine, meaning we actually cannot get into orbit, which is a problem. So I had to quickly uh, detach, turn the thing a little bit, reattach, and do that quickly, quickly, very quickly before we fell back into the atmosphere. Luckily we were at over 200 kilometers, so it wasn't a problem, but um, uh, okay, maybe this isn't a perfect design. What, what was your first clue? Um, so this means we actually have to, once we deorbit head there on, on our suborbital trajectory coming in for landing, we have to actually detach, flip it back around, and then reattach it through. Oh, blah. Bit of a mess, but it, yeah, like I said, a few optimizations can be made to this design. Uh, but it is now time to release the payload into Zavild. We're going to go ahead and send Val onto that payload. Not really sure how she's getting back. I guess we'll have to send up a, I don't know, I'll, I'll call up Matt. On a lonely planet, slowly spinning its way to damnation amid the incompetence of unpre- Just kidding, I'm not actually cool enough to do a collab with Matt Lown. But, uh, that's actually the second time I've done that joke. Shout out to you if you can remember the first time. It was in a video a long time ago. I guess all my videos are a long time ago now, but- <laughs> That's beside the point. We have uh, just done our re-entry bird, our re-entry bird, our deorbit bird, and are going to be starting our re-entry toward the Kerbal Space Center using our very odd-looking shuttle. We need to, we need to fix that probably. There we go. Start. There we go. Got to get it reoriented, and this actually does need to be basically dead on. Not basically, literally, does need to be dead on the orientation of those those back fins. It needs to line up perfectly with the wings because, you know, let's say it's a little bit to the left when we dock, you know, we do our re-entry and we are starting to pitch up trying to use those control surfaces, it's going to also like pull us to the left, which is not good. We need to keep them straight so we can actually use the control surfaces effectively, which since I am an expert KSP player, we were able to get lined up perfectly. Really wasn't that hard, it's pretty straightforward. But uh, we are now starting our re-entry, which was not really that hard. A little bit less of an event than I thought it would be. We basically just pointed at the center and we got there. It didn't really overheat. I had to do a little bit of heating correction and I'm playing at 120% uh, heating, so that was a very pleasant surprise. This thing is just, it's actually really easy. I'm surprised this works so well. You know, NASA, you should be taking notes. If this thing is easy to play and easy to fly in Kerbal Space Program, it's gotta be just, no problem in real life. But uh, here are coming in for a landing. Cool little foggy clouds. Gonna be doing a video on these clouds here in a little bit. The very cool volumetric clouds. But uh, here come the landing gear. Here comes a nice little flare as we come over the runway. And welcome back to the Kerbal Space Center after a very successful first flight of our redesigned space shuttle. 